So I want to discuss a little bit about um, the water pressures that you expect to see within a typical boiler system um, and why you would need something like an expansion tank uh, as well as how you set the initial static pressure of the system and what range you're sort of expected to see the boiler in um, while it's in operation or while it's heating water. So the first thing to sort of cover is how does the boiler itself get water into the system. Now this could be done, um, there's a difference between purging the system and getting all the air out versus setting the initial static pressure of the system. So you may use uh, full city water pressure to purge out your zones. Uh, so that being you could actually hook a garden hose to some of the service valves that you may see on here. Um, like just for example this. So say you wanted to fill that loop, you could go ahead and Put full, for example, 55 to 60 PSI right on that to get all the air out of the system. Now, you do want to be careful depending on the type of heating um, that you have, whether it's in floor, or radiators, or baseboard. Um, all those can typically handle those pressures with no problem, but you just, you just want to be conscious about what you're doing um, and how much pressure you're really throwing at it. But that's when you're purging the system. But what you want the system to be filled with uh, before you go ahead and uh, turn on the boiler and, and start heating things. So that's usually around the 12 to 15 PSI range. For example, this Navian system will automatically regulate that pressure at 12 PSI. So on this certain application right here, this boiler has what's called an auto feed which will automatically fill the system. It may not purge all of the air, so you may still have to manually purge things, but in this video, we're just talking about the pressure itself and what you wanna see. So um, this, when you initially start up this boiler, it will take the 55 or 60 PSI, whatever your city water pressure is at, and fill the system. And as soon as it feels some resistance, which is meaning the system is becoming filled, some of the air is being eliminated, but as soon as the, the boiler registers 12 PSI internally, it's going to shut off that water supply. Now, in this boiler, what would happen is if, if it shuts off and then you get some air bubbles that move around and that pressure drops, it's going to open it again and allow that full 55 or 60 uh, PSI to enter again. And when it feels the resistance and hits 12 PSI, again, it's going to close. So, the point being that it's going to automatically regulate the pressure at 12 PSI. Now, even if you don't have an auto feed, a lot of times what you would see is off of an expansion tank, you would have a fill valve um, or a pressure regulator in that spot. Now there's reasons you would put it on the expansion tank and where that expansion tank and fill valve or pressure regulator would be placed in the system. And we could talk about that separately, but Regardless of how you're feeling, 12 PSI is pretty much the, the go-to. And again, there's other reasons that I'll get into further depths of how you determine what that perfect pressure is. Um, and it's every system may be slightly different, um, especially when you're getting into larger or systems that have to push water higher up. Um, that can determine raising pressures and whatnot. Now, on a residential application, that 12 PSI is what we're going with up top and on this boiler that's where it's located but somewhere in the system you're going to have a pressure relief valve that is set to a specific psi um, again on this one it's 30 psi so most residential boilers are going to be maxed out at 30 psi meaning this system will be filled at 12 psi and when the water starts heating up it's going to obviously expand that water and pressure is going to build up and if it ever goes above 30 psi that pressure relief valve will open and release that pressure for safety so that way you don't burst something um, so it's expected to be in the range of 12 psi to 30 psi so if you were to go on again on this boiler specifically or if even if you had a manual um, pressure gauge on the system you'd be able to read that it will go to um, when the system's completely cooled down, it's going to match whatever that fill or pressure regulator is set to. So again, on here, the auto fill is set to 12 automatically. But if you had a manual one and it was set to 12, when the system's completely cooled down, 
that pressure will sit. You'll see the gauge drop down to 12. It might take a little while to fully, and maybe it may never fully cool off because the boiler will kick on before it gets time to cool down. But if you were to shut the system off, ideally it would drop back down to that initial setting of 12 PSI. So at its maximum point, the most it will ever um, push could be 30 before the pressure regulator goes off. So a lot of times you'd be surprised. This, this system can ramp all the way up to 28, 29 PSI. I mean, a pressure relief valve is not going to automatically be 100% perfect at 30 PSI. So you could even push it to 30, 31 before that thing actually goes off. But ideally, it should be at 30. So this system, don't be surprised if your system is actually running at 28, 29. Now, what you could do is bleed off a little bit of that pressure. And if you have an automatic valve, um, so if, what I'm getting at is if you're noticing your pressure relief valve is leaking, it may just have one or two or three pounds too much of static pressure, meaning that maybe you're at 15 PSI and it needs that 15 PSI of room, um, and now you're just, just barely pushing above. So um, there's a few other reasons why you could be having a leaky pressure relief valve. I mean, that could be because your expansion tank is not doing its job, and we'll get into that next. So... Um, the reason you need an expansion tank is for the expansion of the water like we just talked about. So <clears throat> this tank, and ideally what you want to set this tank for, is the static pressure that the system is at. So what that's going to do is as soon as the system starts to heat up and expand that water, if the bladder and the air tank inside of the expansion tank is set to that static pressure, as soon as it starts to expand it's going to push on there and it's going to allow that expansion to take place inside the tank um, to sort of go over quickly about where you would place the expansion tank in a system um, ideally it's going to be at the point of the lowest possible pressure which would essentially be before the secondary circulator pump so on um, in this case on this system here's one of the secondary uh, zone pumps and if you follow it up it's pulling right from the air separator and right off that air separator is our piping to our expansion tank so the point of the lowest pressure is going to be before it and the point of the highest pressure is going to be right after the pump um, and that's going to go through all the zones and if it sort of makes sense that the pump's pushing at its highest pressure at this point and when it goes through everything it's going to obviously have a pressure drop all the way back here the pump is now pulling the water as opposed to pushing um, so that's where you want to have that expansion tank and typically that's also where you want to have your fill valve because if you think about it your secondary pump pulling and the lowest pressure point if you're filling the water there, the water is going to want to naturally fill at that point because it's going to rush. You're putting a high pressure into a low pressure. That's just naturally going to be the best place to fill. Um, it doesn't have to, and you may have a system that's not, but that is ideally the best place to put it. Um, so I hope this video sort of clears up some of the thoughts. I've been getting a lot of comments and emails um, just about all sorts of things, you know, whether it is the, the pressure or the placement of components. So if you do have questions specifically, of why does that go there? I'm trying to do some of these videos to sort of talk about that. Now, again, every system is not the same. And I always reiterate that to everybody uh, and my customers, um, just so they understand, like, why does my system not look like that one? And some of it just has to do with the layout, but some of those things are important. Um, it's not a one size fits all, no system is. Um, so again, if you have questions about that, comment. I love answering all you guys' comments. Email me, my information's always um, in the description of the video as well as on my channel. Um, reach out, and uh, if you guys haven't yet, subscribe. I'm making lots of videos just like this. Please look back, we have at our other videos, we have tons of videos of not only just boiler systems, but construction work, um, residential home builds. We cover a lot of uh, different subjects, so reach out if you do for any, if you need a system built or if you need any help with the design or any consulting. And uh, with that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.